We'll begin with a survey, typically a CAD file. And sometimes these CAD files are nightmarish like this one. It could take anywhere from 10 minutes to 10 hours to clean up the CAD data. This one took about two hours. And then we start analyzing the original site plan as far as where is the waste, where can we improve upon, where's our connection points, what are the defects of that plan, and how many units do they have on that plan, which creates our target benchmark. Once it is cleaned up in Land Mentor, we'll add surrounding data like the school as shown here. And then we start hand sketching. We're looking to create some flow to the street pattern. Typically, we'll start out with the trail system. In this case, we did not for certain reasons and so we're doing is we're looking at a street pattern that maintains flow and then we connected the trail system around that street pattern as you can see here leading to the school often we're working for the builder who is also the developer and in those cases we're going to enter their homes into land mentor and we're going to define each area of the home so that we could get an intimate feel of the detail of that home we'll also set the minimum setbacks that will be used around that home for the layout. It is at this stage that we might feed back some suggestions to make that home a little bit more valuable or work with the site plan better that will be designing the spaces around the home to connect the inside to the outside. After that, we'll export that 2D plan into SketchUp and then we'll start building the 3D model of the home. And we're, what we're looking for is where the gathering points are in the home, the window locations, for example, you gather around the kitchen, what's going to be your view from that space from the living area around the home we might suggest moving some windows around or even some walls around at that stage we're also going to lay out the home as if it's a walkout so every home we're going to go below the surface and that way when the terrain varies the home doesn't hover in space while we're creating the 2D and 3D homes, we're going to also be looking at the site plan. And we're going to underlay that site plan and then use the actual geometrics with Land Mentor and start laying out what the actual dimensions are. For example, right now we're taking some circles, we're experimenting with some radiuses and how that would work with our site plan. We've had the red lines, our, our offset minimums, and we start developing this geometry from experience on the 1300 plans we've worked on, just what will work better. So there's almost like a feel to the geometry that we're starting to build. The patented Land Mentor software we developed eliminates the need for CAD and not only simplifies the process, but creates precise geometry accurate to 20 decimal places on all of its calculations. This way we go right to final plat accuracy, eliminating the need for an engineer or surveyor to try to make a concept plan work in the real world. Once we set the center lines of the main trails and streets, we define them as alignments to automatically create the right of way in street pavement. Then we use the automation to create the street intersection and oversized cul-de-sacs, which are more efficient than those set to minimum radiuses. Software automation tends to dumb down designs, so we avoid using software as a crutch. For example, instead of pressing a button to create a cul-de-sac, taking the extra time and effort to create something more unique adds value to all the homes along this cul-de-sac. As you can see here, an extra minute or two can add tens of thousands of dollars in premiums. The use of CAD has always been to take known processes and make it faster. We developed Land Mentor and its included education to create wonderful neighborhoods, not quick subdivision plats. It is this extra attention to detail that will help homes sell faster and add more value. In this area, we are adding a pedestrian diffuser at a main trail crossing of the main internal street. This diffuser increases safety. As you can see, we're making it asymmetric to add that artistic flair to the neighborhood character. Once we have developed all of the street and main trail geometrics, we add the spatial intelligence to create paved surfaces. This allows us to spatially analyze how efficient our design are compared to the original layouts. This next process calls up the homes as a land mentor group. This allows us to graphically locate the homes and place them for effect. This is our experience over the past 42 years. We have been developing software and pioneering the methods of design. In this example, by pulling back from the street, we were able to place an extra home, demonstrating that placing homes to the absolute minimum setback is not always the best idea. The use of groups allows us to set the streetscape, 
consider views from within the homes and set the precise geometry to pass lot lines through at a later time. The typical planning process at streets, then lots, then submit, and then build. Our process, we place each home and family individually, and the lot line generation is developed afterwards, often as the very last step. It is from the phantom lines that we include in each home group that we use as control for the lot geometry. That way we could develop the plat while maintaining existing regulatory minimums. We take the extra time to develop the plat with even bearings, so instead of property lines with bearings like north 89 degrees, 23 minutes and 12 seconds east, they are instead north 89 degrees east. It creates a cleaner looking plat like that of the past. Because we are gaining efficiency by exceeding the minimum setbacks and creating fluid organic streetscapes, we are assured the lot area minimums are far beyond those required by the city. To meet deadlines, we can have multiple designers at the same time. The 3D models are created during the site planning process and are often developed at no charge to our clients. In this case, Adam is designing the east section while I'm working on the west section. Here, I isolate the new geometrics and save them away so Adam can call up these additional 86 homes and lots as a group to be merged into his work. I also designed the five foot wide meandering walks to provide complete pedestrian circulation while adding both safety and character to the neighborhood. These walks are isolated to be called up by Adam as a group at a later time. Using the same method we develop for surface intelligence of the pavement areas, we create spatial information of the lots. We also highlight the meandering front yard space. The last geometric step is to develop the driveway geometry, which we take the extra time to taper the driveways and minimize the pavement. By tapering the driveways, we are setting examples for construction that could save tremendous costs, as well as reduce environmental impact and add green space to the streetscape. One of the most critical tasks is to have a benchmark in which we can measure efficiency. At this stage, we took the original information from the existing site plan of 400 lots and created the surface information of the previous pavement. We isolate the center line and highlight it to make sure there are no errors. Then using Land Mentor, we see the original plan had 19,040 linear foot of street. We then query the area of the previous pavement to see there's 13.161 acres of concrete to serve the 400 lots. So how did we do? We repeat the same processes on the new design to discover that the center line length is 12,561 linear feet. This is 1.2 miles less length or 34% reduction. The paved surfaces are 29.3% less to just 9.306 acres, serving 396 lots. Essentially, we lost four lots with almost one-third less street, all using the identical minimums. At this stage, we're simply embellishing the plan for presentation. Here we use surface intelligence to shadow the homes, which provide more of a 3D effect for the 2D plan. By pressing the green button, we derive the overall impact of the development improvements, essentially all the man-made surfaces. The site plan is green and all the impervious surfaces in white to visually check to make sure we didn't miss anything. And when verified, we create a chart which will be placed on the plan. The areas are accurate to 20 decimal places. The next step is to transmit the design to the virtual reality engine to create the base plan to place the 3D models that we developed in SketchUp through the Land Mentor translations. The spatial data is overlaid on the digital train model and a video game display appears to move about the site. It's on the base of the 3D site that we place the homes, people, cars, trees, and other elements. In this case, well over a thousand 3D models were placed with only about a half a day's work. We furnished the site plan in 2D along with the Land Mentor software and the 3D file. With instructions, it takes about 15 minutes to download, install, and learn. Our clients can then move about the site as they please. Using what's essentially a video game, they can enter any home to look out the windows. 
If our clients have a powerful enough computer and mixed reality headsets, they can immerse themselves into the site and get the feel of space as if being there. To reduce the queasiness of VR, we set specific viewpoints that they can easily move about without motion sickness common to headset use. The 3D is a service we don't charge extra because it is 2020, right? Shouldn't 3D be the main communication tool instead of a 2D black and white or slightly colored plan? While every site is unique, the process of design varies to the unique aspects of the site and the architecture. This site was flat, others topographically complex, and others laced with wetlands requiring some variations on the methods. However, in the end, that before and after results should be just as shocking if we are serving our clients to the best of our abilities. The site plan is essentially the developer's business model and the foundation of how builders' homes are showcased to the marketplace. These processes are superior to subdividing methods of the past. Why limit your success with obsolete methods and technologies when better ones exist? We are here to serve you and be part of your consulting team.